Okay, welcome divas and dudes to Powerhouse Bakery. You guys are kind of all spread out, so you're in opposite corners, but I'm so glad you're here and I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Um, we are still in Oh My Pie season. Um, we have a, a really fun one to do today. So um, typically in Thanksgiving, what flavors are we looking at? We're thinking of pumpkin and turkey, and we don't always think of a chocolate pie as a traditional um, item in Thanksgiving, which is why I picked it right after Thanksgiving, because this is one that is great anytime. Um, because we know that chocolate is a fantastic food. The cocoa bean is where we get chocolate. And so just like any other uh, bean or even seed, um, there's so many great nutrients that come from the cacao. So typically we think of chocolate as being the, the flavor of love, which is in what? Valentine's Day, so in February. We do the, the Oh My Pie season really in this time frame, but anytime the paleo chocolate pie is available. So we call it paleo uh, because in a typical uh, paleo diet, dairy is taken out. But another reason why this really fits is that when we're looking at super healthy ingredients, the cacao is front and center in that lineup. The cacao is loaded with antioxidants. So we think of the term antioxidants sort of as a common word, but today I wanna dig a little deeper into what we mean by antioxidants. There's another term that I also wanna sort of vet out, and it would be uh, phytochemicals. Phytochemicals. Because so often, you know, we hear these terms in the world of nutrition and health and wellness, um, but we don't exactly know what they mean. And whenever it comes to looking at chocolate, well, now we want to have some good conversational uh, terms to be able to really share why is chocolate considered a healthy ingredient and how can we make it even healthier? Um, so what I'm going to show you today is how to make this beautiful dark chocolate into a pie. And then I'm also going to show you how to make hot cocoa in the purest, healthiest version that I have figured out. Um, because when we look at the value of this antioxidant, um, it really boils down to some of the criteria. So when we think of our best foods list, there's one criteria that, think, that really comes to mind when we're looking at chocolate. So it's like, gosh, can we really put chocolate on our best foods list? And I say, absolutely. And we think of the quality of our foods on the best foods list, right? So I know we have proteins, we have carbohydrates and fats, and you're gonna say, yeah, where would the chocolate fit? Um, surprisingly, chocolate has fiber. It has lots of minerals, in addition to that funky term called phytochemicals. So because it's in the bean family, we could probably put it in the carbohydrate category. So when we think of, you know, how are we gonna qualify this, this wonderful food, if we put it into our best foods list, because it's a bean, it's probably gonna have a little bit of protein, um, but it's gonna have some carbs. And you know, of course, also chocolate has some fats. Because when we get this bean that is in the carbohydrate category, the cocoa bean, cacao, it's um, really when we turn it into chocolate, we're going to be adding some sweetness sometimes, and we're going to add some fat to this little cacao bean. So if you've ever tried cocoa nibs, Cocoa nibs are like the purest form of chocolate and they're very unsweet. They're really quite dry because it's in fact in a, the bean category. Some even call it a seed because it comes from the cacao tree. But when you add sugar and fat to this cacao is when you get chocolate. And of course, 
this is where the rubber hits the road. The quality of the chocolate is going to really make a difference in how we can use it in our best foods list. So you might have heard um, of the 100% dark chocolate, right? Um, anybody ever try 100% dark chocolate? No. If we think of pure chocolate, it's going to be dark. So let's talk about the difference between dark and milk chocolate versus milk. People will often say, you know, can I use dark chocolate or can I use milk chocolate? Well, the thing is, dark chocolate is going to have more of the cacao bean. So if you've ever heard of Dutch processed, that really refers to the milk chocolate. And honestly, when it's Dutch processed, it's not going to be nearly as high quality because it denatures some of those essential nutrients that come in the dark chocolate. So we don't really want to do milk chocolate and we don't want to do Dutch processing. And that's because it takes away some of the nutrients. So just like when we think of other good quality ingredients, we want the least amount of processing so that we can maintain as much of the nutrients as possible. So that to me is a really important um, qualifier. So we want dark chocolate and of course there's going to be some discussion around how much and what kind of sugar if at all, and then what kinds of fats are added to this beautiful nature's beauty that is going to have a little bit of naturally um, occurring fats, just like other beans have a little bit of natural fats and um, even, um, of course, the carbohydrates. So when we're looking for chocolate on the market, we want something that's no less than 75% dark chocolate. And if you can use, if you can get used to it, 100% dark chocolate. What are going to be the qualities of 100% dark chocolate? It's typically going to be a little bit uh, darker, uh, more bitter, and so it's going to take some time to get used to that quality. Um, but it doesn't mean that you can't do it, right? I, I know lots of folks will say, well, part of my healthy regimen is I have a dark chocolate square every night before bed or every you know afternoon with my coffee or tea and there's some beauty around that so let's dig into um, once we understand the quality of the chocolate because remember anytime we're looking at our best foods list those qualifiers we're, we're going to talk about are always portion the company that the food keeps and of course the quality of the ingredients and of course the cooking method so all of these criteria absolutely are going to relate well to how we pick our chocolate. We don't want the cooking method, so no Dutch processing. Um, portion, of course, is key because even a good thing, too much of it is still too much of a good thing. Um, and then the company that it keeps. So do you have your chocolate with a glass of wine or do you have your chocolate with some dark coffee or espresso or do you have your your chocolate with something else so the company that it keeps could certainly make or break the value of that food on our best foods list and then of course the quality like we mentioned we want it to be pretty high highly concentrated in that cocoa bean okay so now let's look at a little bit of the health benefits that science tells us around chocolate because what's exciting is we think of it as the, the food of lovers. We think of it as heart healthy. Um, even back, uh, it's not even that long ago, back in the 1990s, they really did a lot of study around free radicals. What are free radicals and how does that relate to us? Uh, free radicals, um, if we think of a, um, a cell, cells are going to have of course, a cell membrane all around its edges. And inside, there's gonna be a cell makeup. There's gonna be hydrogens and there'll be carbons and oxygen. A free radical is something that takes a hydrogen away because it is positively charged and it wants to get another hydrogen to make it less positively charged. I promise that's the only bit of science I'll go with on this one. but. Suffice to say that we don't want 
a hydrogen that's lurking about to bump into our cell and steal one of its hydrogens to get more stable on the outside. That's not good for the cell, right? So when oxygenation happens or um, when we add a hydrogen in here, that hurts the cell. So when we have an antioxidant, these are chemicals that stop this. We say no. An antioxidant, of course, can be from our bodies. It can also be from foods. Foods can come into our system and say, look, free H, I'm going to bind to you, right? So that it cannot hurt the cell. That's what we don't want is for it to hurt the cell. So that's going to go away. And then this can go out of the body as waste product. So really what this is referring to the, for the most part is um, the epithelial lining of our uh, cardiovascular system. We, we know that free radicals can cause these cells to become sick. They can cause the cells to be, um, they can break them down and cause swelling. So basically any food that has antioxidant benefits is a good thing for us because it helps our body fight off those free radicals. Okay, so antioxidants. So what is it about chocolate that has antioxidant powers? Well, it's that beautiful cacao property. It has essential fats already part of it, not to mention, you know, when we add fats to make it the chocolate, the cacao itself has essential fatty acids. And, you know, when we talked about this before, we have the PUFAs and the MUFAs. Do you remember that? The essential fats that come in different forms. Let's just suffice to say that chocolate has the really good kinds. So similar to salmon and avocado, dark chocolate is right up there with it because the essential fatty acids in chocolate are now going to help in that war against the free radicals. So chocolate has those wonderful essential fatty acids. There's a couple other things that chocolate has that is really cool. Um, we, we know that minerals are valuable to us. Chocolate actually has a lot of great nutrients that are minerals. We know that it has potassium, it has phosphorus, it has manganese, it even has iron, all in chocolate. Um, and surprisingly, a good amount. Does it mean that it's a health food? Well, in a way, yes. But we go back to our portion. How much chocolate should we have? Now, in some studies, it says, you know, that somewhere between oh, 75 to 300 milligrams of the super ingredients, so those antioxidants in chocolate, will actually help us. A lot more studies need to be done because we're not exactly sure. And we're, we also are really careful to tell people, go out and eat a bunch of chocolate. And why is that? Because it's also high in calories, right? So if I were to look at my beautiful guitar, so this is the chocolate I'm going to use today. Actually, I'm going to use two different ones. So this is the one we use at the bakery, and it is 63%. So it doesn't quite fit the 75%, right? It doesn't quite fit. It's close. It's called extra dark chocolate, 63% cacao. And then I have this Hershey's. This one we do use in the, um, in the bakery a lot more often. And this one is 100% cacao. So this one's used in our dark chocolate almond muffins, in our sweet potato brownies, in all of our frostings, our cakes. Um, but this one has such great meltability. And it does have a little bit of added sugar. So if I look at the nutrition facts, it has five grams of fat in 30 pieces. So about a quarter of a cup, five grams of fat. So not, not a lot, still a, still a really good one. This one, Again, this is the 100% cacao, and it has fats 0.5. So a lot difference, you know, oh, exponentially different. Um, but this one, again, is going to be a powder rather than the chips. 
And so when we, when we think of you know, the range of uses, it kind of makes a difference. So if it has all these wonderful minerals and it has healthy fats, what kind of um, conditions does chocolate help with? We know that it helps your cardiovascular system. It helps blood pressure. It helps diabetes. And it's even good for your skin. This is, this is the kind of what the media tells us. In these different ranges, whether it be 100% cacao or, you know, really we want to have it between 75 and 100. The conditions that chocolate helps with are mainly around the cardiovascular system. So helps against cardiovascular disease, again, because of the free radicals. Blood pressure, it helps to reduce blood pressure mainly because it acts as a vasodilator. It helps the epithelial lining. You remember that little cell I, I drew for us? It helps it to relax because it increases the oxygen flow. Diabetes, it, it, in the way that it helps this condition, is it helps to reduce the insulin resistance to insulin. So in the same way that it helps the cell to relax, it also helps the cells throughout the body um, be more sensitive to the insulin that you have in your body. So if you have a tendency for uh, high blood sugar, eating dark chocolate can help improve that. Again, small amounts, but in these different varieties could be a really good way of having your, your cake and eat it too. So you can have a snack, a dessert around the holidays that is absolutely yummy and it has some value. Same idea around the skin. Because it works at the cellular level to help relax, it acts as a vasodilator, it helps to get more fluid into the skin, more healthy fats and hydration, so it helps the skin. Again, these are all, you know, um, in small doses, we know we can see some benefit, but we just wanna make sure we don't overdo it just because we consider it um, something that's valuable because of the qualities that the chocolate has, those antioxidants. Where else can we find antioxidants? All kinds of seeds, all kinds of nuts, complex carbohydrates. And so, you know, when we think of the best foods list, this is one of many that highlights some of those great antioxidants, but it also helps for, uh, to remind us that we get antioxidants and polyphenols and phytochemicals in a lot of foods. So we don't have to think we're just throwing in the towel, the health and wellness towel by eating a piece of cake or having some hot chocolate. So uh, last week when we had that cold front, um, I had my sister-in-law and brother over, we were building a fence. She actually has diabetes. She takes a medicine. And so it was cold and she doesn't drink coffee. So she got some hot chocolate. And sadly, she did not get the hot chocolate that I like to recommend. Her hubby went out and bought her some of the instant packets. You know what I'm talking about, right? It wasn't even a sugar-free. It was just chocolate in a packet. And so I didn't want to hurt her feelings. So I zipped my lip and didn't say anything. But the next day I made her some of this and she was pleasantly surprised. Now, this is the way I make chocolate milk and I hope it's gonna wow you. Um, of course you can vary it, but the trick is to see how you can enjoy 100% cacao, get all the nutrients out of it and still make a warm, yummy drink. So I'm gonna start with some almond milk so that we have enough for everybody to sample. I'm gonna make two cups and I'm gonna write this recipe down for you, but it's really something that um, is so easy to adjust. You can use your own um, variations, but start with this. So two cups of the milk of any variety. We even have Mutopia at my house because we don't have a milk intolerance, so I love the Mutopia. I used to think that almond milk was um, a better choice because in some circles, the thought is that dairy will exacerbate uh, inflammation. It will cause maybe skin rashes. I, I have Graves' disease. But upon more and more study, I've completely changed my idea that um, almond milk is not categorically better. If you have a dairy intolerance, it's better. But if we look at the nutrition panel, we can see that almond milk is lower in every nutrient. 
um, protein, carbohydrates, and fats than regular milk. So if you can tolerate regular milk, I would do it. Today we're gonna use almond. So I've got my two cups of milk and I'm gonna do two heaping tablespoons of my dark chocolate and that's it. This is gonna be my hot chocolate. Now, granted, it's not gonna taste sweet. It's gonna have a little bit of sweetness. My, um, my milk is actually unsweetened, which is again, another reason why I really love the Mutopia. It has somehow a little bit of a sweet taste, um, but it doesn't have any sugars added either. Lactose is a milk sugar. So that in itself will sometimes make it seem sweet, but no added sugar. Um, now, all I'm gonna do is stir this up and put it in the mug. And it is so delicious. It's rich and chocolatey. It's a hot, luscious beverage. Now, you might notice I've got other things on my table. My, my beloved sweet spice, which I can put in there. Mmm, smells so good. So this is a blend of cloves, um, cardamom, a little bit of star anise, the anise, um, just, wonderful flavors. So you can add some of this or you could just add a touch of cinnamon. Um, you know, there's such a variety of ways to dress this up. My husband even likes some amaretto extract. So, you know, there's lots of ways to do it. Okay, so there I've added a little bit of spices. What do we know about the spices? They too are loaded with polyphenols. So any chance I have to add those, I'm going to add them. So as we look at the nutrition facts, I'm gonna go ahead and write down my recipe and the nutrition facts of this famous hot chocolate. So it's two cups of your milk or milk alternative, two tablespoons of dark cocoa. So just make sure you notice here that I've got the special dark. Um, there are lots of varieties of this Hershey's uh, and not all of them are special dark. So this happens to be my favorite, not really different in price either. HB does a great price range. Okay, so as I'm looking at calories from the dark cocoa, um, it's 10 tablespoons per cup. So this is 20 calories. And my milk is 40 calories per cup. So this is 80 calories. We're looking at a pretty low calorie hot chocolate, right? Even if we decided we wanted to add a teaspoon of honey, that would only add another maybe 20 calories. So pretty darn good. Hot chocolate that's really good for the heart. Okay, so the sweet spice, if you wanted to add that in one teaspoon, that's gonna give you a little more flavor profile and loaded with the nutrients. And so check this out. It's just now getting warm. It melts. Even though the dark chocolate is hydrophobic, um, it, it gets going really nicely. So it's not super thick. It doesn't have any thickeners added. Sometimes hot cocoa um, has added marshmallow and guar gums. This is not going to have that. But it's just so good. On a really cold day, not like today, sadly San Antonio got warm again. <laughs> Where's our fall weather? But um, this is such a great treat. So now I'm gonna pour some, I'm gonna pour it into the mug so you can kind of see the texture. It's just about hot enough. I don't really like to boil it. You know, that kind of scalds the milk. And it, while it doesn't necessarily scald the almond milk, it's not the perfect drinking temperature. Look at that beautiful color. So yeah, that is a great treat. Um, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have you get to sample it as soon as it cools just a little bit and I'll put it in your little sample cups. But this is just a great treat and a perfect way to enjoy your 300 milligrams of cacao so that you can get all of the benefits to your heart, to your cardiovascular system, uh, to keep your insulin resistance minimal, not to mention, oh, it's gonna taste so good and it's a great way to share love with your friends and family. So now I'm gonna go to my next creation.
for the chocolate pie, it's going to take a couple of added ingredients. So what I'm doing here is I'm adding some fat, the coconut cream, and it comes in two ways. So of course it's going to be dairy free, which brings us back to the goal of being paleo, you know, which is another way to say it's good for people that have a dairy allergy. Um, but what I love about the coconut is it has um, a beautiful consistency. It's when I open the can, you'll see, and I've used the coconut cream before with you guys. So I know you've, you know that it has a thick top on it and that's where all that fabulous um, richness comes from. The different uh, milks are gonna vary a lot. So just explore the brands. I honestly like this Nature's Charm brand the best. They also make a, a whipping cream. It's just hard to find, especially nowadays. But this one is a, a good second best. See, it's got a lot of great um, fat on the top. And remember, we talked about the value of uh, dark chocolate. It does have some of its own healthy fats. But now what we're gonna add to it, we really don't wanna, we don't wanna take it down a notch, we wanna take it up a notch. So picking good quality fats and truly the, um, the value of coconut fats is still somewhat debated um, because it has some saturation, which is why it's gonna look like this at you know, uh, colder than 75 degrees, it's gonna get solid. But I promise you, it's still a great choice. We're not gonna use a lot of it, just like any fat but it's gonna be so good for our, uh, our chocolate pie. So I'm gonna actually put all of this in my pot, but I just want you to see the difference. So that was solid, and now the rest of it is liquid. And I'm gonna get all of it out. <coughs> all of it out. Whoops. I dropped that in there. So when I'm making this chocolate pie, there isn't really much cooking at all. It's really just melting it and getting all of the, um, the ingredients kind of forming together. So I'm gonna get all of that cream off there. And now I'm gonna add in my chocolate chips. And I'm gonna bet that in my test kitchen, I'm gonna do this. Um, I bet we could replace these chips with the powder, and that would give us 100% cacao and no sugar at all. Um, but this one is so low in sugar and people love it so much, it is the one that we do here at the bakery. But if you wanted to try it and give it almost, you know, the supreme um, qualities of the most polyphenols you can get from chocolate and taking no sugar, I think it'd be a really fun one to try. But all I'm gonna do here is melt the chocolate, and again, it's it's 63. You could even take this up a notch and get the 100% cacao chips. It's gonna have a little more bitterness, um, but I think people would really like it. What else could we add to make it a little bit sweeter? non nutritives right? We could add, if we wanted to, we could certainly add in stevia, um, monk fruit, and all of those. I've just decided that I like better going with um, just a little bit of sugar that's added to the chips. But I promise you, I think if you wanted to take it up a notch, you could sure pick um, a dark chocolate and then use your own added sweetener if you so choose. You could add a little bit of honey. Just be careful with uh, adding a liquid sweetener because it will make it a little tougher to get the, the pie to be solid. Yeah, see, look how quickly this is melting in. I've got one more can that I want to add in. This is the condensed milk. So in this recipe, there's two spots where there's a little bit of added sugar. Um, this Nature's Charm coconut milk that has been condensed is also sweetened. So I'm gonna tell you how many grams of sugar. I think it's still quite low. Um, three grams. So pretty low, pretty low. Because it's mainly adding fat. But look how creamy it is. And that's because they've just, um, they've processed it enough so that it's very thick. See how beautiful thick that is. So this recipe is so simple and I sent it over to Jose so that we could put it into the e-blast. And this is um, one can of condensed coconut milk, sweetened or unsweetened, and one can of the coconut cream and some of the, the dark chocolate. So I use a whole, bag of it, which I think I can tell you it's uh, 
the normal ounce bags. Uh, looks like 14 ounces. The, yes, yes. It is slightly sweetened. But when you taste this, you're going to see that it's not very sweet. Most people um, that get our pie like the fact that it's not really very sweet because, you know, that's kind of the goal. We're trying to always look for ways to decrease sugar. And if you compare this to, say, a traditional chocolate pie, what do we make with that? We use um, maybe a pudding mix and milk or, you know, some variation of that. Um, but, of course, has a lot more sugar than this. And the nice thing is when you're working with family and you're trying to keep it as mainstream as possible, you don't want to offend your friends and family because you happen to be more in the know <laughs> on super healthy. I think this is a good meat in the middle because it doesn't seem like it's uh, a strict diet food by any stretch. It's still beautiful. Look at that creaminess. So it doesn't have to cook much. I'm just melting it. I'm making sure that there's no chunks left of that um, coconut cream. I use the coconut cream also for the butternut pie, if you guys saw that one. And um, I noticed one of the times when I made that pie and I didn't melt the coconut cream as much, it showed up in the pie and that's not nearly as pretty as having it all homogenous. So I'm just making sure it's all melted and beautiful. And really the next step is to pour it into my crust. Noticed here that um, these crusts turned out so pretty, didn't they? So uh, we just fluted the edges. We just um, put a little bit of fork presses. That way we didn't use the beans in this pie crust. We just uh, flattened it and then to prevent it from bubbling up, we just did the little fork presses. So, so pretty. And these little pie shells are recyclable. So definitely if you end up using um, some of this for you know your pies, know that you can wash them and um, you know use them again. I'm going to turn off my burner so that my chocolate is ready to go. So while it's pretty warm, I'm putting it into a cold pie crust. I'm just going to pour it right in. There's always a little bit left over. Oh darn, we have to lick the bowl. I know, right? So there's probably about an extra cup or so which is why I love to get to share it with you all. There used to be, I don't know if it still exists, there used to be a place where you could go and to do drinking chocolate. Have you ever heard of that? Um, I used to teach over at Lifetime Fitness and there was a place right near it that you could go in and it was like drinking chocolate shop, which I think seems a little bit odd, but when you sample this, you realize, oh yeah, that could be a thing because <laughs> it is so delicious. I'm gonna let it cool just a little bit and then have you sample it. Um, because the nice thing is, even with a little bit of sugar, um, it's a very special treat. Um, and again, if, if I compared the, the calories, the fat, and even the sugar content of a typical pie, that's what I wanna do for you now. So hot chocolate, I think I showed you the calories. Um, I could also show you the sugars. I'll give you that. So in the unsweetened, there's zero sugars. And in the almond milk, you know, it always gets a little fuzzy because, you know, carbohydrates are still there, only two grams. Added sugar is less than one gram. So we'll say, you know, pretty much zero. So zero sugars in the hot cocoa. So lovely opportunity there. Now, if we do the pie, I'm going to give you the recipe and then I'm going to do the nutrient breakdown. So sometimes folks will ask me, you know, can, can a diabetic eat this pie? Because, you know, it's got sugar in it. And I would say, absolutely. And, and why would I say that? What's, what's the most uh, important qualifier in our best foods list? Portion. So we're going to get the best ingredients we can. Sure, we could make it sugar-free, but then we're afraid the rest of the family would go, oh, no, 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 I don't like it. So we're gonna go more traditional, have a little bit of sugar, everybody can eat it, and the diabetic, I would still say, yes, have a piece. Small amount, very good. Because we also know that, remember, the dark chocolate is a vasodilator. It is helps with insulin resistance. So if you're gonna pick some pie, you might wanna choose chocolate if you have diabetes. So in your pie, 
We want one can of the cocoa cream. One can, and this one's a small can. I'm gonna give you the ounces in a second, of the condensed coconut. And then one bag of chocolate. And of course, just as I'd mentioned, there's ways to vary this. Um, the Nature's Charm is my favorite. The cream itself does not have any added sugar, but the condensed one does. So we could do unsweetened here. They do, it does exist. Nature's Charm makes it, it's a, it's a condensed coconut milk. And um, you could also see it as evaporated coconut milk. Um, and or you could use the variation here and try cocoa powder, which is really why I wanted you to get to sample the milk chocolate or the, the chocolate milk, we call it, but it's really using the just the powder and no sweetness at all. Okay. Well, I'm gonna have to do a little R&D on that because I, I'm not sure. I just, I just threw it out there as a great alternative um, because the, the uh, texture will be very different. So I, I'll play with it and I promise you, I'll do that on Valentine's Day. I'm gonna do the sugar-free 100% cacao chocolate pie. Deal? That will be a great way to, way to in, have Valentine's celebration. So I want you to get to sample some of these wonderful flavors Yes, <gasps> what a great point. Or over ice cream, right? Now we're really talking. Okay, so I'm gonna add a little so you can taste. And Mary, if you could bring us a couple of those little spoons, in case you don't literally wanna drink the chocolate, you can spoon it. But we love it when there's a little bit leftovers because we all run over with our spoons and say, oh, I wanna bite, I wanna taste. The other thing we... No. Uh, either one, those should work. All right. So in summary, what I hope that everybody will get to try is looking at the total value of the antioxidants and thinking about how you can go from good to great by maybe taking out the sugar or maybe just substituting this pie for a store-bought pie that um, is going to have 10 times the amount of sugar and processed ingredients. So I hope you get to enjoy this beautiful Oh My Pie season and definitely try some of the variations and let me know what you come up with. So enjoy. Thank you.